Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to today's ECHO session. I first of all must apologize that we are supposed to have um, uh, radiological features of tuberculosis, but uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, we are unable to have that presentation. But instead, we shall discuss uh, two cases um, surrounding um, infant, orphans and uh, vulnerable children, or VCs. Uh, before we go into the case discussions, I will invite Mr. Henry Stinger to come and take us through the PDA app, which we'll be using actually for registration of attendance for ECHO and also for obtaining CPDs. So please, you are advised to pay attention on how we'll be using this um, <clears throat> application so that we make the processes of registration easy and seamless. We have noticed that of late, uh, some facilities have been having a challenge to submit uh, their registers. So this is actually making uh, it easier and embracing technology. As we know, during COVID, it's the new normal, and we have to use a lot of technology. So let's welcome Mr. Henry Stinger to take us through the PDA app. Henry. All right. Uh, thank you, Doc. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, before we go through the presentation, uh, my name is uh, Henry Asichinga. Uh, I'm the Senior Monitoring Evaluation and Research Officer working under the HW21 project with the ECHO, ECHO team. So basically today we're going to look at the orientation for ECHO participants on the PDA application. So to, to start with, we'll basically look at the outline or the session objectives. So I'll take you through the overview and the benefits of the PDA application. Then we are going to learn on how to scan in and scan out of an echo session. Then we'll also go through on how to update our personal details, the best location, our qualifications, as well as our roles. So to start with, we have our first poll question. All right, uh, thank you very much. So the first poll question is, do you have to download an application to your smartphone to enable you scan in and out of echo session? So that's the first poll question. Do you have to download an application to your smartphone to enable you scan in and out of an echo session? What do we think? So remember, there's, there's no wrong and right answer. We have to give it our best depending on what we understand. Let's give it more try. Less than 50% of the code. Do you have to download an application to your smartphone if you have to scan in and out of an echo session? Thank you very much. We'll go to the second poll question. The second poll question is, what's the name of the application that needs to be downloaded to your smartphone? What is the name of the application that needs to be downloaded to, the, to your smartphone? So let's give it a try. We're doing fine. Okay, let's go to the third poll question. 
is it a must to have internet connectivity to scan in and out of an echo session? Is it a must to have internet connectivity for you to scan in and out of an echo session? So this is the poor, third poll question, if we could give it a try as well. True or false? Well, this one is fantastically done. Okay, so we are going to the last poll question. You will have access to all documents for a particular session as soon as you scan in. You will have access to all documents for a particular session as soon as you scan in. Is that true or false? That's the last poll question for today. Okay, more, more, more. A few seconds before we close this poll. All right, so let's find out what the answers to these questions are. And just a special mention that Chilonga Mission in Impika is joining in for the first time. Please welcome and feel free to participate and contribute uh, to this station. All right, uh, thanks very much. So we'll proceed and we'll give the responses, the correct responses or answers to our poll questions after we've gone through our presentation. So PDA uh, stands for Personal Digital Attestation, which is abbreviated as uh, PDA application. So the PDA application is a tool that we'll be using for us to scan in and out of an echo session in able to enable us uh, be more efficient in terms of tracking uh, echo participation and attendance. So uh, if you notice on the screen, when you download the application, so basically uh, those who are using the Android operating system, you go to your, to your Play Store, and those that, that are using uh, iPhone or Apple devices, yeah, you go to your Apple Store to download the PDA participant app. So if you can go right now to your Play Store or Apple Store and just type in PDA participant. The first application that you're going to see, that's the application that you're supposed to download. And basically, it's going to look like this. It's going to have a session icon uh, as soon as you type in those words. So when you, when you download and sign up, you are going to see three icons at the bottom of your screen. So basically, the first icon uh, will look at your, these are basically your attestations. Then the, the button in the middle is the one that enables you to scan in and out of an echo session using the QR code that the program is going to provide. Then the button at the end, on your bottom right end, is uh, your profile. So that's the button that you use to update your profile and all your credentials. So basically, this is how the application looks like when you open it. And then the program will provide you with a start code, QR code and the end QR code. Then in terms of uh, usability, it's very flexible and easy to use, just like playing a video game on your phone. So 90% uh, of the time or interacting with the application, basically you'll just be using uh, a joystick, which allow you to, to click on one of those three buttons and scan the QR code. So basically, just clicking and scanning the QR code. That's how you'll be uh, scanning in and out of an echo session. And then in terms of using it offline, when you're downloading the application, you need online. And when you're signing up, you also need to be online. But as soon as you sign up 
and sign in, you don't need to be online for you to scan the start and the end QR code. You only need to be online when you want to access the presentations or for you to be allocated your attestations. That's when you need to be online. Otherwise, when scanning in and scanning out, you don't need to be online. So it can work in an offline mode. Then in terms of ownership, uh, the application basically is downloaded on your personal phone. So this is your, your personal device and uh, you, you have to own it as an individual, as a participant. And also in terms of updating your details, you have to put details that you are recognized by uh, the HPCZ or GNCZ. So you have to put your, phone, your full names in terms of uh, updating your, your profile. This is an example that has been given here. So you need, when updating the, the details, ensure that you use your names that you are known by the government of the Republic of Zambia. Uh, then in terms of uh, program participation, uh, the data that, that you interact with or participants, you can easily download it on your device and share it with uh, your colleagues or friends anywhere in the world as long as you've got internet connectivity. Then uh, as soon as you sign out of an echo session, the application is going to allocate you an, an attestation which will basically allow you to have access to all the documents pertaining to that particular session. So if you just sign in, you will not get the presentations. So in order to complete the cycle, you have to ensure that you as well sign out. So uh, at the beginning of the sessions, uh, we'll be sharing the start QR code. And in the middle and towards the end of the sessions, we'll also share the end QR code to allow people to scan out of an echo session. So signing in or scanning in is not enough. You have to ensure that you scan out as well at the end of the echo session. So uh, this is the start QR code. This is how the QR code uh, looks like. Basically, it's, a, it's more of a, it's a barcode, like the barcodes that we scan when you're doing some shopping in, in the supermarkets. So the QR code is a barcode. And for you to scan the QR code, you have to press the middle button, the bottom middle button on your application after you've downloaded the application and you've signed up. So when you click the middle button, it will activate the camera. So when it activates the camera, then you can uh, take the camera close to the QR code. That will enable you to scan in of an echo session. So as soon as you scan in, you're even going to see uh, a blue tick that will show that you've joined in in an echo session. So if you already have your, your application downloaded on your device, you can actually scan in this QR code. So this uh, uh, QR code, the start QR code, is actually for today's session. So if you already have your device ready, you can go ahead and just scan in on the screen. So there are two methods of scanning in and scanning out. The first method is uh, like the one that we're using currently, where the, the, the QR code is displayed on the screen and you use your phone to go close to the screen and scan in. Then the second method is when you're using your device or your mobile device to attend the echo session. So uh, the way we've displayed the QR code, you can simply take a screenshot of, your, of the presentation or the QR code. And then when you click uh, the bottom middle button, which activates the camera, you are going to see two icons on the right when the, the barcode is scanning. So you click the one which looks like, uh, like it's got two small mountains at the bottom. When you click on that one, it's going to take you to, to your gallery where the, the screenshot for your phone was taken or stored. Then you click on that uh, screenshot. Then you're going to sign in or scan out of an echo session. So to scan out, basically it's the, it's the same method, but remember you can only scan out when you're given an opportunity to do that. So in this instance, 
will be scanning out during and after the echo session. And remember that you have up to four hours after the end of the echo session to scan out. So we'll be sharing the QR codes via email as well as uh, WhatsApp uh, and also on the screen during the echo sessions. So it will give you four hours after the session has ended for you to scan at your opportune time or the time of your convenience because it's important that you scan out because if you don't scan out, you don't have access to the presentation and you will not be recognized as to have participated in the session. So to complete the cycle, you have to scan in and scan out. So in terms of uh, updating your qualifications and your roles on the, using the PDA app, remember the far right, bottom right uh, button, it gives you access to your profile and you can update it at any given in time. Uh, it's not casting concrete. So you can update your credentials at any uh, moment in time. So uh, my interest right now is the best location, the qualifications, as well as the roles. So on the best location, we need to make sure that you've uh, activated your GPS and ensure that you update your best location. Make sure that your best location is always active or on. So make sure that this green button is ticked green and you've activated your, your best location. So in order to get your location, uh, the phone will use the GPS and will pick your location, your current location. So please pick the best location that you are going to be using in terms of participation in the echo sessions. So basically we want to analyze data based on the location of participants. We want to know how many people are participating from Northern province, how many people are participating from uh, Southern province, et cetera, et cetera. So the best location is very important that is activated. So you need to search your best location. Uh, then in terms of updating your qualifications, so here on the qualifications, you put your highest level of qualification. So basically to activate that or to update your qualifications, you just go on add, and then you see a tab that is going to drop down. There will be a drop down uh, menu that is going to open. Then you can update your qualifications accordingly. So it's going to ask you to, to also attach or take a picture of your qualifications, your academic qualifications or your certificates. So you can take a picture of your qualifications and upload it. Uh, these qualifications are going, to be, are going to be verified by a small team that is managing the program and uh, they'll be treated with high level of, of confidential. So you don't need, you don't need to worry that uh, the level of confidentiality is going to be compromised. Otherwise, uh, the qualifications will be well uh, maintained in, in a safe and confidential manner. Then uh, there'll be a part where the program is going to ask you to choose uh, which program is going to verify your, your qualifications. So uh, it's, when you click on, uh, on the part which asks you which program is going to verify your qualifications, no, but, uh, it will activate the camera, scanning. which is going to ask you to basically scan the QR code. So this is the QR code that you're going to scan here. The one which says uh, uh, there is entity, which says John Hopkins Program for International Education in Gynecology and Obstetrics or JPIGO. Then the program is Zambia Echo Program. So basically the program that is going to verify your qualifications is the Zambia Echo Program. And this is the QR code. So when you click, on which program is going to activate your, your, your qualifications, it will activate the camera. So the camera, then you can easily uh, scan this QR code right here for the program, for the Zambia Echo program. Then in terms of updating your roles, it's the same procedure that you undertake like the way you did with the qualifications, uh, but basically it's going to ask, there's a part where you need to type in your roles. So remember our register 
has got a predefined uh, list of qualifications. So we're going to follow this list when updating the roles. So we have doctor, medical licentiate, a clinical officer, nurse slash midwife, lay counselor, pharmacy staff, laboratory staff, HNP student, EHT student, and support staff. So when you're updating your roles, you need to pick from this list on which category you fall as an individual. So let me just uh, try and explain a little bit the difference between HNP student and student. So uh, one of the objectives that the project or the program is tracking is, uh, is the HNP program. So well, the students that are being supported uh, by the HW21 are the ones that were interested in, in tracking to show how many students are attending eco sessions. So this is where the HNP students fall in. So if you're, if you're an HNP student, then you put HNP student as, as your role. Then any other students, you just put a uh, student. Uh, I can give a classical example of uh, St. Francis. St. Francis has different students <coughs> that, that attend eco sessions. So basically those other students, uh, they can put uh, their roles as student. So under roles, I uh, want you to put your, your role, then you put a comma and uh, put your facility name or the organization that you're presenting. So in this example, which is showing on the screen, uh, you see that uh, the role is support staff, then comma, Matero level one hospital. So that's how you should do, populate uh, the role, the roles uh, uh, column. So basically, that was the, the overall and uh, orientation in terms of how to use the PDA application. Thank you. Okay, so probably before you ask questions, we'll start by asking you questions. So we'll go back to the poll questions. So let's see if we um, had followed through the presentation by Henry and uh, trying to see how we can best utilize this. So we'll go through the poll questions again. And the first poll question is, do you have to download an application to your smartphone to enable you scan in and out of an echo session? So let's see if we got that one as Henry was presenting. So do you have to download an application to your smartphone to enable you scan in and out of an echo session? Okay, we're doing fine. We need more and more participants to poll. Okay, so thank you very much, Henry. Any discussion about 4%, seven out of uh, most Kisti uh, said that it's false. And then 93% uh, have said it's true. Okay, so the correct answer is true. So for you to have access to the PDA application, you actually need to go to either your Play Store or your Apple Store to download the application. So the correct answer is true. Okay, so... Um, we go to the second poll question. What's the name of the application that needs to be downloaded for, to your smartphone? That is for you to register for Echo. So let's see if we paid attention. What is the name?
Okay, so um, the majority have said PDA participant, then um, about 10% have said PDA scanner, then, uh, you know, PD participant scanner and scan in and out. So, Henry, your comment on that. Oh, okay. Uh, the response has been good. So, the correct answer is C. The name of the application is called PDA participant. So, remember to type in PDA participant, because if you type in any other words, you'll be downloading something else. Yeah. So it's PDA participant. Thank you. So in short, you'll be downloaded an app. Probably that will take you to Mrs., isn't it? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what does PDA again stand for? So PDA stands for Personal Digital Attestation. All right. Why is it important to say participant? Why not facilitator or... Okay, so uh, participant, it's important to say participant because uh, this application will also help us or help you to track in real time participation in echo stations. So as a, as the term says, participant, we are basically tracking participation in echo stations, which uh, will also enable us is the tracking of uh, CPD points. Yes. All right, so it's very important. You find that there will be PDA participant, there will be PDA trainer. So what we want you to do, because most of you actually will be participants, is to have a PDA participant app. So very important that we do not miss um, that. Okay, the next poll question is the third poll question. And the third poll question was asking us, um, is it a must to have internet connectivity to scan in and out? So this is not about download, but this is about if you have to enter the echo and if you have to enter uh, the, the echo session, do you need internet or not? Okay, we've got very few people, just less than a quarter of us have participated. Please, yeah, great. Okay, so at least we've seen the majority now coming up. This one was tricky, all right? And the reason it's tricky is that um, only about um, 67 have said true and about 33 have said false. So any, any word on that? All right, uh, so remember, uh, when downloading the application, you need the internet connectivity. And even when you're signing up, you need internet connectivity. And at the time you're signing in, you also need internet connectivity. But as soon as you sign in, you don't need internet to sign, uh, scan in and out of an echo session. So uh, as soon as you sign in, uh, then you are home and dry, you can work offline. So the application works offline when you're scanning the QR code, uh, scanning in and out of an echo session. So you do not need uh, internet. So what is the difference, Henry, just clarify this, when you say sign in, scan in, and I think both have got in, you know, they sound like they're the same. What, what's the difference? Okay. So uh, when you open your application on your device, you're going to notice on your top, top right corner, uh, there's, a, there's an icon which allows you to sign in of an, uh, an application and also sign out of an application. So if you don't sign out, the application will leave you signed in. And for you to, the difference between signing in and scanning in, when you open the application, you sign in for you to be able to have access to your application. But when you're attending echo sessions and you want to sign, uh, you want to scan the QR code, that's where the term scanning in comes in. So you only scan in when you're scanning the QR code that you've been presented when an echo session starts. And you'll be presented with, this, uh, with a QR code at the end of the session. So uh, meaning you have to scan out of an echo session when you when you are presented with the QR code, the end QR code. 
Yeah, so basically this is like an email. Like, you know, if you're using, you know, a personal gadget, you sign in, it signs you on forever. Definitely. But say in an event that you're using someone's phone, when you scan in and you, you, you sign in, sorry, and you scan in, then after the echo session, you need to actually sign scan in. out and sign out because it's not yours. Yes. So if it's yours, then you can remain signing, isn't it? Definitely. So you can also use someone's phone um, to, to, to sign in so that once the contact is uploaded, then you'll be able to access them. Okay. Correct. Brilliant. Correct. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff. Okay. So um, the last one is the fourth session, which is... Um, as follows, you will have access to all documents for a particular session as soon as you scan in. You will have access to all documents of a particular session as soon as you scan in. So um, let's give it a try. It's launched. Yeah, it's been launched. Okay, what about this one? So um, the majority, 84%, have said true. The minority, 16, have said false. Okay. When do you access the documents? Okay. So uh, remember, Tim, uh, for you to access uh, all the contents for that particular session, you need to have completed a full cycle. And the full cycle comprises of two steps that you need to undertake. That is the scanning in and the scanning out. So as soon as you scan out, that's when you're going to have access to all the content or, or, or the documentation in terms of presentations for that particular session. So the true answer is actually A, which is uh, that it's true that you need to, sorry, the, the, the correct answer is B. is B. False. It's false. Yeah. Because you need to have signed, scanned out for you to have access to all the documents. All right. Thank you very much, Henry. And probably at the end of this, we could just uh, provide, you know, step by step of how people can download this and how they can sign in. And then um, later on, uh, you know, scan in, scan out. You know, yeah. we've got different types of people. You know, some people, you know, be well vested with technology or not. So at this, at this moment, probably I am, uh, this is the end code. Uh, for those who had already downloaded, you can actually scan it. Um, maybe I'll just allow about, uh, you know, um, two, three questions um, from the network uh, with regards to this. So if anybody has got a question, please uh, raise your hands through the, the, the app. Uh, the Zoom platform, or oh, do we already have some in the chat? I, I cannot see. Oh, you've scanned? Dr. Mpeta, I have a question. Okay, who is that? Sorry. Uh, Wedi Silomba.
case. So the first case was of a 15-year-old boy from Petauke who had stopped taking medicine, rebellious, because nobody had disclosed to him. And then he's fairly not doing well with uh, constitutional symptoms of TB. Chest X-ray was only done later on, which showed some um, infiltrates in the left apex. He had been initiated on ABC3T silopinava, and then uh, um, the viral load has actually been rising from October last year, 2019. And then, um, yeah, the gene expert was negative, which was done about two weeks ago. So the question is that what would be the appropriate psychosocial care to this to help this child? So if we could quickly, we've got less than five minutes. Anyone can give it a go. Anyone, anyone? Clarion, please go ahead. Yeah, yes, Doc. I think in my view, this patient needs OVC services. So we should determine, is there an OVC partner that can help this patient? Probably, I'm seeing this patient to be vulnerable. And also the assessment of the grandparents. It would be vital we look at the welfare of this patient and probably link this patient to the social welfare so that we can macro-manage this patient. And also in terms of uh, TB, I think in my view, this patient should be started on TB. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So the, the, the grandparents are very old who can't even afford to bring the, the child to the clinic. Yes, any other contributions? Please go ahead. We have run out of time. We've got only two minutes on this case. Hello? Okay, so how best would we disclose to this child? Am I still connected? It's too quiet. <laughs> Hello, are we connected? the only ones here. Clarion, go ahead. Maybe the others are disconnected. Okay, the network is quite bad. Yes, Doc, I think we use a very good peer. Yes, what I'm Sorry. saying is this is a critical case for us to do this. This, this, this patient has to go under disclosure counseling, but we need to use a peer. We need to use... Hello, are you getting me? Yes, a peer. Oh. A, a HIV positive peer. So that we can... Okay. Clarion, would you kindly unmute yourself? Yes. Although you have got a lot of background feedback. Okay, Chilonga. Chilonga, go ahead. Good afternoon. Good uh, afternoon. The best way that we can disclose to this child is firstly, by doing comprehensive counseling, making this child understand the reason why they are taking the drugs and the HIV itself, I think at 15 is able to understand a few things. And then secondly, we also use the gatekeepers. The guardians are also supposed to be counseled so that they offer support to them. Because at the end of the day, you do your part as a facility, but this child is in the community. So the community, as well as the, the guardians, are supposed to
support this child in accepting the, the HIV status. Then thirdly, we also have to involve the positive takers. Um, maybe this child can be linked to an adolescent support group, um, particularly those that have the same status, so that they can share their experiences. Yeah, I'm sure at the end of the day, we'll have to accept. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. The last contribution will be from Dr. Bosco. Dr. Bosco, please go ahead and mute yourself. Yes, yes. good afternoon, Dr. Mpeta, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, very interesting case, of course, but I picked some point there on the, in, in NASA Gerard's counseling session. Uh, apparently, there were no mention of exploring barriers of looking for barriers, possible barriers or challenges to the adherence. And we went ahead, changed, we did the viral load, viral load was high. After an answer cancer session, we went ahead and did the substitution, not even the switching substitution. So my advice is such a, such cases, please, as we provide an answer cancer session, let's refer to our guideline on on the page 65, where we had put the structured in our surgeons counseling session, focusing on the barriers, and you develop a strategy that will help us to, to manage patients with high viral load. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. So we can quickly go to the second case. The second case is actually from Chawama in Lusaka of a 17 year old female who was pregnant with. Uh, the, the, the boyfriend refusing um, to test for HIV, presented at 28 weeks of gestation age, apparently ill, uh, chronically ill looking, uh, productive cough, weight loss with chest x-ray, which is uh, characteristic of TB. She's a single orphan staying with a grandmother and the aunt in Cuckoo compound, had stopped school in grade seven, and the mother had died way early when she was two and the father does not offer any support. She has been HIV positive for the past five years. And of note is that the viral load has actually been increasing and currently two million copies, over two million copies, despite an nest canceling being done. The CD4 has fallen, the last one nine months ago being 42, and then uh, was, has been given several uh, you know, regimens of ARRT, including the initial one, ABC, 3TC, and the Feverance, was changed to TLE, then uh, started on second line in 2019, October, that is AZT and boosted Lopinava, then currently was, Lopinava was changed to DTG as a way of reducing the PU burden, something that we contested that this wasn't an appropriate switch. So the questions is, how best can we provide comprehensive care for this child? That's the first question. Anyone can give it a go. Manager, don't you can stop that. Okay, please go ahead. I, I didn't realize we are on. Chilonga, go ahead. How can we provide comprehensive care for this child? Chilonga. Thank you. Good afternoon. I think the first place we've noticed that uh, the, the client was actually taking inadequate doses, as earlier said by the presenter. So the first uh, thing we should intensify is to ensure that uh, the client takes adequate doses before they are switched to other regimens. Because we may be talking of uh, uh, maybe treatment failure, which is not even there. Uh, uh, in the actual sense, it's just a person is not taking adequate doses of the drugs which have uh, prescribed. 
Then the other issue is it's important to, to link these uh, clients in, uh, in that age group to support groups in the community, whereby uh, maybe they come up with a, a group of five or 10 members who, who are, whereby they are giving each other support and they're ensuring that they are sharing notes uh, concerning uh, their status. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mwamba. Clarion Mwamba. Yes, yes, though, considering that this patient has taken so many drugs, I, I think it's a classical case for genotyping. So we, we come up with the correct drugs using genotype. Okay, so you have gone to number two, which is yes. All right, any other way we can comprehensive manage this child? Any other? And the other one is how can we eliminate the risk of HIV transmission from mother to baby? Hello? Okay, there's no one answering. We can go back to the main group. So you're going to force everyone. Okay, anyone who wants to give under a minute? Um, Claire and Mwamba, you still yes, have I, I think, doc, I think uh, for us to prevent mother to transmission, I think we should also look at the boyfriend. If we can compile the boyfriend. Okay, internet is bad to test and we start treatment on the uh, doing sensitivity test for the drugs. So, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Any other? Quickly, under 15 seconds. Okay, see you on the other side. The QR code is displayed as we are waiting for more to join. Uh, do we have any more joining? Yes, um, I can see it today, participants are joining. Okay, so we can start. Huh? Okay, thank you very much uh, for that discussion. I know time is always a problem when it comes to very important discussions. So I will ask um, group one, which is, uh, uh, we are group one. So I will ask group two. Uh, where um, Dr. Chalilwe is and Dr. Thomas. Please um, 
run us through um, the answers to the questions which were under discussion for both cases. Dr. Chungwa and Dr. Thomas, please pick it up. Share with us your discussions. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Doc. So what we discussed in this group is the first case. This child needs a lot of uh, psychological support, need shorter visit, maybe connected to social welfare uh, group and also um, the EF sessions to be supervised and the support group uh, we can have the facility staff and the treatment supporter which is of the choice by client and the client itself so that is the uh, three of people involved there and uh, maybe if possible to do home visits to support and also the nutritional support and the parents uh, the grandparents they also need to be supported educated maybe they can even supervise the drug intake if they are educated on the doses and with this situation of this child with the TB drugs, the lopinavir, lopinavir has to be double dosed. And also the child needs to be worn safely. And also when the child settles down to give him some hope about the school situation later on, once the situations are settled. I think those are the few things to the uh, first question and the disclosure can be done either by the aunt, first we have to equip her, or if she cannot cope with, maybe the healthcare worker can do it in presence of the aunt or the grandparents. That is okay. on the first case. Okay. Would you give us your recommendations on the second case? The second case, the time was very short, so we didn't discuss. In fact, we just started. Okay. And then, of course, we can just give some uh, recommendations which we thought of quickly. The patient, first of all, uh, we didn't see on the labs about hepatitis B RPR investigation. And uh, uh, hope it is done and then the viral load is done they have to trace the result to see how is the viral load the latest one and based on those results they can make further decision if it is high further yet and of course because the change from lopinavir to DTT was done without seeing the viral load we don't know what is going on there and the patient needs to be on safe And I hope the ATT dose, they are giving the right to dose. And of course, we need to trace the FBC, DC, because the client is on ACT based regime and with the malnutrition, pregnancy, and all. Then the nutritional support and the antenatal checkups and whatever is supposed to be that ANC should be done. And for her, she should be also supervised by the grandmother or the aunt because she's only 17 years. So that we will try to get the viral load suppressed. And the boyfriend needs to be indexed, even though he is refusing now. And then the third question, how to minimize the transmission from mother to child. First thing is to get the viral load suppressed by proper regime and the supervised intake and on here. Then of course, uh, we start counseling her on the feeding option so that she won't go into mixed feeding. 
and also inform her about the prophylaxis for the baby. That's in short. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Foloshi. Thank you very much, Dr. Mpeta. Um, just like Dr. Thomas, we, <laughs> we kind of also lost track of the time. We didn't realize it was only five minutes. However, this is what we managed to do. We want to commend the team in Eastern Province for engaging the community health support for the psychosocial care for the child. Furthermore, we note that this is likely a late initiation of ART coming in at only at 12 years. So this child has only been on ART for three years and is already failing. We suggest that this child is linked to nutritional services for nutritional support, that they are linked to counseling services and the adolescent uh, services for peer support. It's important that they have OVC services. We had the privilege of having Dr. Bill, who says, unfortunately, they are not OVC services, so they may have to reach out to the local church. When it comes to disclosure, we are already past the age when this child should have had a full disclosure. However, we have suggested that they don't jump into it. The first thing would be to understand the environment of this child and see how the health facility can work with treatment supporters. They also need to engage the help, the caregiver. The caregiver must understand why this child needs to be on treatment and why this child needs peer support. For the ART, we'll leave it as it is for now. For the second case, another missed opportunity. She's 17 years old. She would have been ideal for index testing when she lost her mother when she was only two years old. And this HIV was being caught when she was 12 years old. She's having a second episode of TB. It's always important to think of MDR-TB. So gene expert and culture are very, very important. Uh, how can we help manage this child? Of course, treatment supporter to help engage this husband, especially through index service, index testing. And adherence counseling is very, is necessary because this child was simply not taking the medication. Should the child have a genotype? Well, it's, um, it's yes, but ideally we recommend genotypes when you've had uh, intensive adherence counseling. Likely the dolutegravir may even suppress this child, but the suppression is likely to be transient if she's not taking her drugs and she, she's failing the backbone. Um, and the, the best way to eliminate risk of mother to child transmission, of course, is by putting this mother on effective ART. We, we wish to recommend that this child must be managed in consultation with the experts because this woman is at risk already of uh, infecting the child. And of course, the child should be an appropriate ART when they are born. So we want Chawama to manage this case with us in the advanced treatment centers. Uh, so we'll be reaching out to them for further, for further clarification. Okay, so thank you very much. And I think similarly the discussion in our group were similar for the, for the boy, 15 year old boy, that we have to see how we can identify the OVC services, which are available of course. And then uh, we try to also bring in community social welfare and that this child should be started on ATT as the evidence for TB is there. And then uh, what's the best way to disclose? Of course, he's 15. We try to bring in um, peer support and adolescent support groups to assist in disclosure. And counseling also should also focus on HIV itself, ART, and also uh, involving the guardians. Then uh, we also have to explore the barriers to um, adherence and then uh, uh, we also adhere to guidelines which are, um, are given. And also we um, um, find uh, staff, the facility staff that uh, would be supporting this, uh, this child. For the female, uh, it would be important, uh, comprehensive management should involve um, counseling. Uh, we should also think about resistance testing, especially after optimizing treatment. And then uh, we continue the TB treatment 
And uh, we also rule out MDR, um, drug resistance testing for TB, uh, correcting the dosage for the ART, which was underdosing, and then a community support group that would assist uh, this woman. Then um, possible elimination of mother to child is effective therapy and prophylaxis for the child. And then indexing the boyfriend as well would be important in um, suppressing and ensuring that we prevent mother to child. Well, it has been a roller coaster of a day. And uh, I think we really thought the cases would be walk over, but as we have seen, uh, cases involving our patients normally bring out a number of issues that are sometimes quite depressing, sometimes also interesting, and also just, uh, you know, help us to identify the areas where we need uh, to improve. So for those who have been asking for the QR code, please, you can appoint your gadgets towards the screen so that you scan that in order for you to access all the materials of today's um, session. Um, I'm not sure if there's any burning issue before we close it. We have gone slightly 10 minutes uh, past the expected time of um, ending, which is at four. Uh, Dr. Folosh, we didn't discuss what next week's session is. Are we going to repeat what was supposed to be there today? Radiological? Thank you so much for that question, Dr. Mpeta. Uh, we wish to apologize to the network once again. This week, we meant to have tuberculosis. So we may have, uh, we have the option of having uh, radiological features of TB or treatment failure. We'll communicate once the experts have given us approval. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Foloshi. So from all of us uh, in the hub and uh, everyone around who has made uh, this session, um, you know, uh, possible, goodbye, and we'll see you next week. And we're now during the course of the week uh, what uh, we'll have next week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good day.